The first royal wedding on this list is that of King George III of England and Sophia Charlotte. George III's reign was one of the longest in the history of the United Kingdom, lasting from 1760 to 1820. He went through complicated geopolitical periods, such as the Seven Years' War, U.S. Independence, and the Napoleonic Wars. Much has been said about the madness that assailed him during the end of his reign, but little is mentioned about his marriage, one of the happiest and longest lasting of the European courts. The ceremony took place on September the 8th, 1761. The king was 23 and the queen 17. The two only met on the wedding day. The great probability was that everything would go wrong, because the king was in love with an English noblewoman named Sarah Lennox. But after the wedding, George decided to devote himself exclusively to his wife and never had a mistress. The beginning of the marriage was difficult, as Sophia could not speak English. As the months progressed, the couple realized that they had much in common, such as their love of art, music, science, and literature. Sophia Charlotte also struggled against the opposition of her mother-in-law, Augusta of Saxe-Gotha. While George carried out his political duties, Sophia Charlotte was a patron of the arts. They had an impressive 15 children, 9 boys and 6 girls. George bought Buckingham House in 1762 to be used as a family retreat, as it was close to St. James's Palace, where he worked. When George began to suffer from episodes, at the time designated as madness, the king was placed under the care of his wife, whom he could not visit due to his erratic behavior and sporadic violent outbursts. Charlotte continued to support her husband during his mental illness, probably linked to peripheria, something that worsened with age. Her eldest son, the Prince Regent, who would become George IV, retained real political power, while Charlotte was her husband's legal guardian from 1811 until her death. The Queen died on November the 17th, 1818, at the age of 74. George III died on January the 29th, 1820, having lived 81 years and 239 days, reigning 59 years and 96 days. He was the longest reigning king in England, surpassed only by Queen Victoria and the immortal Elizabeth II. Philip II of Spain had four wives. With two of them, the relationship was poor, but the third, Elizabeth of Valois, fully captivated his heart. Elizabeth was the eldest daughter of Catherine de Medici with Henry II. She was only 14 when the marriage talks were about to be wrapped up. Philip was 30. The marriage between the two was the attempt to secure peace in France and Spain, as the two nations had been at war for over 65 years. In addition, Philip II had only one male heir, who had fits of lunacy and poor health. He needed to have more successors. With this marriage, he wanted to kill two birds with one stone. On June the 22nd, 1559, the proxy marriage was celebrated in Paris. Six months later, Elizabeth set foot on Spanish territory as Queen Consort of Spain. At the Spanish monarch's side, she had everything at her feet and never wore the same dress twice in Philip's presence. At the side of his French wife, Philip II experienced a youth he had never had. Elizabeth was the main reason of his life for eight years. That was much longer than he had spent with his two previous wives. Only one issue overshadowed the life of the royal couple, childlessness. Philip and Elizabeth's marriage was slow to be consummated, as Philip had to wait for his wife to have her first menstruation. In 1564, the couple had their first sexual contact, after which Philip experienced the greatest of his infatuations. Philip II had two daughters with Elizabeth de Valois, who came of age after many hardships. The woman did not feel comfortable during sexual intercourse, which was due to the king's large member. This was not a mere rumor, as ambassadors reported this to Catherine de Medici. However, the marriage between the two came to an abrupt end. On October 3, 1568, during the premature birth of a male baby, Elizabeth de Valois died at the age of only 23. Philip lived much longer and married Anna of Austria. He wanted to have an heir, but he never forgot Elizabeth. The third place on this list is taken by the marriage between Tsar Nicholas II of Russia and Tsarina Alexandra Feodorovna. Nicholas was born in 1868 and Alexandra in 1872. In 1849, after the funeral of his father, Tsar Alexander III, Nicholas married Alex of Hesse. She, upon becoming his wife, 
changed her name to Alexandra Fyodorovna when she was converted to the Russian Orthodox Church. The wedding took place in the chapel of the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg on November the 26th, 1894. It was a Victorian wedding, serene and austere on the outside, but based on intense and passionate physical love. Nicholas and Alexandra's parents did not approve of the marriage. Even Queen Victoria was against it. Alexandra first visited Russia when her older sister, Ella, married Sergei Alexandrovich, Nicholas's younger brother. Alex was 12 years old. Nicholas, the heir to the throne, was 16 and fell in love immediately. Unlike other royal marriages, theirs happened by their own will since they were in love. Even facing opposition from their parents, Queen Victoria and Russia, the pair had a very happy married life. The couple was also very fertile. They had five children, including Alexei Nikhailovich. The boy was born in August 1904 and was the long-awaited heir to the throne. While he was still small, a serious health problem was diagnosed in the boy, hemophilia. This incurable disease affects blood clots and it is believed to have been passed down from Queen Victoria to her descendants. Alexandra, the queen's granddaughter, passed the disease on to her son. She felt desolate and sought every kind of cure for the boy. She also became a religious fanatic, which increased the Russian population's opposition. With the Russian Revolution in 1917, Nicholas II relinquished the throne. In July 1918, Alexandra, Nicholas II, and all their children were brutally murdered. In 1837, when Queen Victoria inherited the British throne, just weeks after her 18th birthday, and already after a long line of male monarchs, she was considered the symbol of a new era in the country. And speculation about her future husband quickly surfaced. The choice of the consort king was always a significant risk. Often, this figure revealed ambitions for power and the intention to deceive his wife. But Victoria chose well, her cousin Albert. This option was, above all, a political decision, not the impulse of a young woman hopelessly in love. It was only after Albert's death that Queen Victoria confabulated the idea of having made a choice out of love. The wedding took place on February the 11th, 1840, in St. James Chapel. In the beginning, the relationship between the two was marked by several conflicts and different opinions. But over time, the couple cemented a solid and indestructible relationship to the point that Albert never cheated on his wife. They had nine children. The relationship came to an end with Albert's death on December the 14th, 1861. Victoria's grief was enormous and the lukewarm feelings the public had previously had for Albert were replaced by sympathy. The queen wore black as a sign of mourning for the rest of her life, and Albert's rooms and all their houses remained untouched. These were even supplied with hot water and freshly washed linen towels every morning. These practices were not uncommon in the households of the wealthy. Victoria withdrew from public life, and this seclusion eroded some of the prince's works. He tried to make the monarchy a national institution that set moral and political examples for others. Albert is considered the founder of the principle that the British royal family should remain above politics. Charles V was born on February the 24th, 1500, and Isabella, Portugal, was born on August the 24th, 1503. The Spanish king was a cousin of the Portuguese princess, as both were grandchildren of the Catholic monarchs. To reaffirm this Iberian calling, Charles V married Isabella. The emperor continued the policy of marital unions of the Castilian kings to one day achieve the peninsula's full dynastic unification. In 1525, Charles wrote to Isabella's brother, John III of Portugal, proposing a double marriage agreement. Charles would marry Isabella, and John would marry Catherine, Charles's younger sister. A marriage to Isabella was more beneficial to Charles, as she was closer to him in age, was fluent in Spanish, and gave him a dowry of 900,000 Portuguese cruzados, or Castilian doubloons, an amount that helped solve the financial problems caused by his wars. On March the 10th, 1526, Charles and Isabella met at Alcazar Palace, Seville. The marriage was originally a political arrangement, but after their first meeting, the couple fell deeply in love. Isabella won the emperor over with her beauty and charm. They were married that same evening in a quiet ceremony in the Hall of Ambassadors just after midnight. 
Despite the emperor's long absences abroad for political reasons, the marriage was a happy one. The two remained devoted and faithful to each other. The empress was regent of Spain during her husband's absences and proved to be a good politician and ruler, impressing the emperor with many of her achievements and political decisions. The marriage lasted 13 years until Isabella's death in 1539. The empress contracted a fever the third month of her seventh pregnancy, which resulted in prenatal complications that caused her to miscarry a stillborn child. Her health worsened due to an infection, and she died two weeks later, on May 1, 1539, at the age of 35. Charles was so grieved by his wife's death that he cloistered himself in a monastery for two months, where he solitarily prayed and mourned for her. He never fully recovered from Isabella's death, wearing black for life as a sign of eternal mourning. Unlike most kings at the time, he never remarried.